While you may think that the literacy rate in Canada is high, it turns out that might not be the case. Some experts are saying just because a person is able to read and write, it does not necessarily make them highly literate. Reading comprehension plays a big part in being considered literate, and it's in this regard that some are saying we in Canada are in a state of crisis. And joining us now to explain this, we have Ruth Rumack. She's an educator and founder of Ruth Rumack's Learning Space in Toronto. So uh, let's start by asking you, what does literacy actually mean? What's the definition? Uh, most of us think, you know, if I can read and write, I'm literate. Reading and writing is not all that literacy is about. It's more about understanding what we're reading, being able to communicate effectively, and really having a deeper understanding of what's put in front of us. So for example, uh, the literacy rate in Canada, um, I would think that most people are, fall into that category, um, maybe more than other nations. How do we stand as a, as a nation, as Canadians? Well, 42% of Canadian adults have low literacy, which means that they're able to follow simple instructions, they're able to create simple uh, communications, but beyond that, they are not, they're not able to, and they're not able to keep up. How did you come up with that number? That is a statistic from Stats Canada. Do, okay. you, do you know what their methodology was in research? I mean, that's all Canadians, so how do you determine amongst all Canadians whether you know, this person's literate, falls into this category, or this person is below that level? Well, there are a number of measures of it. There are a number of adult literacy tests that are performed in different locations, and the number is taken from that. So you have to have a certain level in the literacy tests. Uh, level 5 is the highest, level 1 is the lowest. If you're in a level 1 or 2, you're considered at a low lit literacy rate. Okay, I want to ask you about school because it would seem logical that the first place a person learns about reading and writing and comprehension is school, starting at the elementary uh, school age. Are, is that where we should uh, focus our attention, place the blame for this illiteracy? Blame is a hard word. You know, the teachers are doing a very good job. They're, they're trying their best. They have a limited number of hours to really work independently with students. We also have a number of newcomers that come into the country on a regular basis. And we have, uh, you know, there are other issues, cuts to special education, cuts to English language learning classes. So when we have all of these variables, it makes it difficult for the teacher to really complete the set of tasks that we put in front of him or her. I think that as a student goes through the school system, um, we need to scaffold, we need to really create step-by-step -step instructions for literacy both in the reading, reading comprehension and the written expression in order to get the job done by the time they leave high school. Um, Ruth, in your experience, does the use of social media, specifically by young people, stunt one's ability to become fully literate? That is a good question. I was just speaking with this about this with somebody else recently. That, you know, we have a text speak. We have a way of communicating on cell phones, texting, and, and other social media very quickly, incorrect spelling, incorrect grammar. And what I think the issue is that do children understand that there's a difference between what is correct, the conventions of proper spelling, writing, and grammar, and what is acceptable when you're texting between your friends? You know, I see a lot of high school students at, uh, through our practice at Ruth Rumax Learning Space, and we see students who are using text speak in their communications with their teachers, and where perhaps in an email that's appropriate, in a formal essay or in a formal um, examination situation, it's definitely not appropriate. Okay, so literacy really means being able to understand, to comprehend, to draw conclusions uh, from reading text. Uh, yes. How do you teach In, someone? I would say it's, Sorry? It's, it's about it being able to infer, right. being able to make deeper connections, and being able to really um, discuss in a sophisticated way what it is that you're trying to to share with so the world so how do you uh, how do you teach someone to do that I would imagine that some people's brains are hardwired that they can do that and other people it's a challenge but how do you teach that person well it's easy to teach grammar you know the the, the ABC's writing math but this is something different it is, and in fact, it's layered. You can't teach it in one sitting. It takes many pieces, many stepping stones to get to the place where a person really understands how to go deeper into the text. So it's something about asking why, asking how, and not just the first why, but the second and third why. So you may ask a student a question when they're reading a text. Let's say they're reading a novel study, and you ask a question about, well, why did the character do that? Well, their first answer may be at the surface, but it's their second answer of, well, why, why would they do that? 
how did they come to that conclusion? Or, more importantly, relating back to themselves, what would you do when, if you were in that situation? Those are the types of critical thinking skills and higher order skills that we really need to be pushing in the school system. And that's a hard thing to do, as you said, because without having some one-on-one -on -one time with a student and recognizing where they are falling short, it's difficult to remediate that. Ruth, uh, um, I've got a couple of kids that just went through the school system, finished high school, college. Uh, to both of them, reading wasn't cool. Um, it took too much time. It was way easier to watch something, watch a movie, watch a documentary, watch a teacher, for example, go through the motions as opposed to sitting and reading. I remember when I was a kid, book reports hated it because I had to read the whole book. Um, yes. Kids do learn differently nowadays, though, don't they? How hard is well, it to get, re rein them back in and say, look, you've got to be able to read in order to comprehend? I think you have to catch a student. You have to catch a child and catch their imagination with something that really means something to them, something that's relevant, something that's meaningful, but still has a, a high degree, a, a sophistication, let's say, in the text or in the vocabulary. So, you know, when we work with our students, we try and choose books that make sense to them, something that is relatable to what they see or do in their everyday life. It could be uh, starting with a graphic novel, something that has more pictures but still has some sophisticated text, moving on to different subjects that relate back to them. Maybe it's a sport that they're interested in, maybe it's a part of the world, maybe it's nonfiction. Maybe some students just prefer to read about nonfiction things and will glean information from there first and then mm. we can put that back into context. Uh, I want to ask uh, ask you about a uh, or along with the statistic of 42 percent of uh, adults between under 65 have low literacy skills. On the Canadian Literacy and Learning Network site, it says one percent increase in literacy rate would generate 18 billion in economic growth every year. What do, what do they mean by that? Well, look, when you are graduating students who have low literacy, and some of them are going on to college, um, most of the higher literacy students are going on to university, but at the same time, you know, there is a wide range of programs out there. But if you've graduated a student who has a low literacy rate, and then they go on to post-secondary education, they are at risk of not fulfilling their degree requirements if their literacy can't, can't handle it. So if we're graduating students at the high school level who can't keep up at the college or university level, how are they going to keep up in a global economy? How are they going to keep up in a marketplace uh, of professionals who expect that higher level communication? So that statistic does transfer into the literacy rate and, and what we're doing. If we can promote literacy with our young students, get them to graduate, get them to university and college, and then into the workplace more prepared, I think we're going to have a much better return on that investment. And that will hit home with a lot of people when they hear that. That's Ruth Rumack. Thanks so much for being with us today. We appreciate your expertise. My pleasure. Thanks, Ruth. When we come back, the hacktivist group Anonymous, they are waging war on ISIS now, and it's about time they turn to a worthwhile cause. Yeah, but how do we know they're not interfering with operations already underway? We'll debate that next on Square Off.